To thee we come, O Lord, our God. examination of our conscience. <laughs> Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I ask that you please recite with me the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. You sit speaking against your brother, against your mother's son, you spread rumors. <laughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone, the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Christ, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, grant that we find no dishonor in the humanity of your divine Son. May we be attentive to him as we move through life, so that we may do your will and remain his brothers and sisters. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty and Eternal Father, the source of life. We humbly pray this day for the repose of the souls of your children, Jan Adamski and Helen Kislowski, who has passed before us. Receive them into your care and bless them with your everlasting love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading from the story is taken from the book of Genesis. After the man Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You had eaten them from the tree, which I had given you to eat. The man replied, the woman who you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response with responsorial psalm is with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord God, <clears throat> hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand, but with you in forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the drum. God, God. Let Israel wait for the Lord. The Lord is the first of and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is coming his redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. The second reading is from the second letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that there is one who raised the Lord Jesus, who raised us also with Jesus and placed us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our, <clears throat> our self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us 
an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but what is unseen, for what is seen is transitory, and what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not as many as by the tongue. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and among his own kin and his own house. Cleanse my heart and my lips, almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again, the crowd gathered, <clears throat> making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub, and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak the, to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking round at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Words taken from today's Gospel according to St. Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, a family of God. The bond of a mother to her newborn child is unlike any other relationship in society. In the animal world, it is not uncommon for a mother to take an orphan and raise it as if it were her own and shares her child with the other mothers as a part of the group, the pride, or the band, and therefore a part of the total family. In our world, adopting a child by someone who are not necessarily their biological parents raises that child and loves that child if it were their own. Though I grew up with paternal twin sisters, four years younger, I never had a brother. My brothers were the neighborhood kids I grew up with, played baseball and football in the streets, and even built several forts in the woods with them. We were banded as brothers. Think for a moment of the band of brothers in war which has existed from the very beginning in history, but in our history, from the Revolutionary War, through the American Civil War, the World Wars, Korea, Vietnam, to our present conflicts in Afghanistan, in Syria, and around the world, men spoke about those who fought alongside, those who fought together and protected each other. They call them their brothers, who many say that these brothers were closer than members of their immediate family. Now Jesus being told that his mother and brothers were outside, Jesus questions those seated, who are my mother and my brothers? When I first read the scripture passage in preparation for today, the sentence sounded strange to me in the beginning. Who are my mother? Shouldn't the sentence read, who is my mother? But the use of the word are is plural, meaning many. It is well known that in many Native American tribes, a newborn was fed by many mothers who shared their milk for not only their own, but for newborn children, which, <clears throat> which cemented the mother and especially the uh, child in the tribe. Another interesting fact in this portion of Holy Scripture, we read, and looking around at those seated in the circle, now, in Jewish tradition, meals and many other important social functions were served in a rectangular design. Synagogues were mostly square or rectangular in form. But in the Gospel of Mark, we hear of those who were seated in a circle. In a circle, there is no distinction of moving up the social ladder, as mentioned in the lesson of the wedding feast, but it was in a circle where everyone was equal, a part of the hub, the center of the will, forming a perfect circle. Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, is that hub within that circle that holds everything together and makes his church 
the body of Christ, the Christian community, united as well as being dependent upon the strength and the stability of all those who are a part of that circle, the disciples of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus said, here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The will of God. What is the will of God? Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Will is defined as a determination of one having authority or power. Jesus begins this most important prayer with our Father. Did not Jesus in his agony in the garden pray, Father, if at all possible, let this cup pass from me, but not as I will, but as you will. God's will, God's determination. So if we follow the words of our teacher and master, who asks, who are my mother and my brothers? Look around. Everyone you see who are seated today among you are our mothers and our brothers and our sisters. And unlike many families whose mother has become detached from her children, or children who have become detached from their mother, in a true Christian understanding, Christ Jesus is our older brother, the firstborn among many, as St. Paul makes reference, and that binds all of us to his church. Jesus teaches us, as an older brother, how we are to live, love, and forgive. He showed us at his crucifixion the love that he had for all mankind, his family in God. In the last moments before dying on the cross, Jesus speaks in John chapter 19, verse 26, 27. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loves standing near, he said to his mother, woman, Behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. My dear brothers and sisters, in the Church of Christ, we are all called upon to be one family, brought together through his divine presence in the Blessed Sacrament, which our Lord shares with us, in memory of him. We have the calling from our Lord to love one another, to forgive one another, to pray for one another, and to help one another. In this, the family of God. Our Lord reminds us, truly, you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let the words that Jesus speaks of today Take form within your heart, though there may be differences, though there may be quarrels, as in any family, it is Jesus Christ to whom we must turn and submit, for if we call him Lord and Master, then this is what he is and should be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, Baker of Heaven. Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, the one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. One's enemies will be those of his own household. sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, accept this oblation which we bless in your name, for in receiving we are filled, and in returning we are fulfilled. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal Father, gracious and merciful, we pray for the souls of your departed children, Jan Adamski and Helen Kislowski. Lord, receive them into your care. Love them as the divine shepherd. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Give 
thanks unto the Lord our God. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through his teaching and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and to all people. Still hearing his word in our world today, we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the whole world to come. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who is not in the house. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, Lord. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the homeless, and for those who hunger, for all abused and neglected children in our world, and for all victims of violence both here and abroad, as well as all those who serve in our armed forces. And of all your presence, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering, that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and count among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he yet lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. <clears throat> In 
in like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and a chalice of everlasting salvation. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, <clears throat> that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants in blessed memory for Jan Adamski and for Helen Kislowski, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray in place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Saints, grant us peace in our day. 
that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. of the Lord be with you always. And always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, and grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace, I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ our Lord. Amen. 
May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning through Him. All things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light, the real light, which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Then let us pray for the repose of the souls of our dear departed, for Helen Kislowski, and for Jan Adamski. Eternal rest, grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.